Mayor, thank you very much for taking the time for this. I know you're a busy man. Um, can you tell us, uh, sort of, I guess it's breaking news, it just came out a few hours ago, but uh, can you explain a little bit about the letter? No need to read it, obviously, but just to, just to explain a little bit about it, sir. Of course. Uh, Pete, you know me, I always like to start with good news. You heard about the train, right? We got the train coming back. Absolutely. It's a huge, big win here for this community, and I just always like to start positive. Uh, thank you. Thank you to the residents who reached out. Thanks to MP Lawrence. Thanks to MPP Pacini. Thanks to everyone, all of my fellow mayors in the county who've come together to put pressure to get this back for our community. It's a huge win. It's one step in the right direction. Okay, so you're talking about the letter I sent to uh, the, the province, to I.O. and, and to uh, Premier Ford. For sure. Happy to sort of go into it. I'm going to refer to my notes here just to make sure I stay on, on point and that I don't ramble. Um, so basically, council, myself, and senior staff continue and have always continued to receive calls regarding the use and the condition of the property at 390 King Street. Um, we get complaints and concerns regarding zoning, property standards, lot maintenance, fire and safety issues. This happens on a fairly regular basis. Most recently, the arrival of automobiles, the arrival of boats and trailers really sort of brought this even more into the public light and we received a, an increase in the number of complaints. So today, the town of Coburg sent a letter to the province and to Infrastructure Ontario requesting that the province take necessary steps to become compliant with all municipal bylaws in Coburg. Okay. There's a question, you know, it's sort of an obvious question. Why couldn't have that have been done before? Okay, so that's a great question, Pete. Um, I think it's important to think there are two aspects of governance. There's the politics and there's the bureaucrats. We have been in contact with IO. IO and our staff are on a regular basis, have been in contact. Remember, this goes back to September 2023. Sorry, September 2023. So this isn't a new issue. This is something we've been dealing with since last September. So there is always an exchange of contact between our staff and the staff of IO. They are always ongoing. Why did it take council this long to write that letter? Again. One of the things we've been working with is to try and find a solution. Writing letters to the province is part of that solution and we're now at that point. The reality is, is we were looking for ways to move forward. We've always been looking for solutions and in this case and in this time, this council supported the idea of writing this letter and so this letter is being written to the province asking for them to comply with our rules just like any other property owner in this community. Time frame you're looking at by the province, and I know it's speculation, but I mean, you, the sooner the better you hope to get a reply. Pete, I've learned very carefully from mistakes before. I will not speculate as to what the intentions of the province are, nor will I speculate to timelines. Let's look at what is happening. This council continues to uh, work towards the safety of this community in all aspects. And in one of those aspects is addressing the concerns around Brookside. This is the step that this council has taken at this time because this is a step that we deem necessary. So when you're asking questions of how long are the provinces, I don't know. That's going to be up for the province to decide. The reality is, is that Coburg is asking very clearly in this message to comply with our rules, just like everyone else. I think it's important to realize this is what makes this different than anyone else. I mean, if it was your property or my property, the town would take steps to do that. However, we've already talked about this at length. When it comes to the province or to the federal level government, we are a creature of their laws. So at this time, we sent a letter asking the province to comply with our bylaws. This has been, and I don't wanna, we've covered all this, but this has been one big frustration and I'll encapsulate everyone from the police, fire department, paramedics, staff here, yourself, council, and up. I'm sure Mr. Bacini and Mr. Lawrence have been, you know, getting emails as well about this. So this is just one big, and again, it's not like, I don't want to say, and I don't want to ask a question for too long, but I mean, it's not like we're asking, you know, everybody has obviously a right to live and to live, you know, as best they can, but there's just certain things that everybody also has to live by the law. Correct. And, and what you're asking is what about the rules? That's what this letter is asking. This letter is actually requesting that the province be a good neighbor, just like the rest of us, and to comply with the rules of Coburg. Um, and that's 
what's going to happen. And that's what we're hoping will happen. I can't say that's what's going to happen. That's what we've asked the province to do. Um, and, and in the meantime, we are moving in a direction as a council and as a staff to always protect the safety and security of Coburg. I, I have to focus on that. And I have to make sure that that's the message of this interview today, Pete. This council is doing everything it can within its jurisdiction to look out for the safety and well-being of all Coburg residents. That means the safety and well-being of the encampment residents. It means the safety and well-being of the people who own houses on the perimeters of the encampment. This council is always focused on the safety and well-being of our community. And we are using any and every tool we have at our disposal to work in that way. You mentioned something about it must be frustrating. I can't imagine the frustration for our local MPP. I can't imagine the frustration for our local MP. Um, I can't speak to them. I, I can assume what I am proud of is the way we are working together. When, when you see something like the, the thing I talked about with the Via Rail, that's not because the mayor of Coburg is out there fighting. That's because we've gotten support from our local MP and our local MPP on this file, as well as all other mayors. I think when it comes to this solution, um, what you're seeing is local politicians and the provincial politicians really working well together to try and come up with a solution in the right direction. Um, there is no one throwing anyone else under the bus on this. And I think that's what's really important to talk about with this letter. This letter is about asking the province to be a good neighbor and to allow and to comply with the rules like everyone else. The nuances don't need to be discussed. We, we've talked about it. It's part of our legislation. Um, the reality is if the province wanted to come in and build a hospital, they could do so. And they have the means with which. Um, if the province wanted to go up and hook up to the trailers that are illegally parked on the, their property, they have the ability to do that. We're asking for the province to comply with our rules. That's what this letter is about. It's not about pointing fingers. It's not about blaming. It's not about saying it's their fault or this person's fault. What this is, is the Cobra Council using every and any means within its position to look out for the safety and well-being of our residents.